Boom. What's up, guys? Ambition, what's happening, baby? Holly, Nutella girl. What's going on, guys? How's everybody feeling? Time to get this show started, man. Time to get this show started. What's up? What's up? How you guys feeling, man? You guys ready for this? You guys ready, ready, ready for this? Nice ambition, nice. Boom. Let's do it, definitely. Everybody share the feed. Let's get a bunch of people in here. Let's get, let's pack this room really quick. I'm gonna try to, uh, Parapreneurs is in the house, man. Welcome, people, welcome. That's what's up, man, definitely. Shared, thanks, guys. I appreciate you guys sharing. I appreciate the hearts. I appreciate our drive, our our relentless drive for, for success, man. That's what this is all about. Where's Ricky at? He's in here. I just seen Parapreneurs in here. I think that's Ricky right there. Yes, I'll leave this up for replay. If you guys gotta come and uh, if you guys gotta come and go, please share the feed. Let's get this thing packed. Let's get as many people in here as we can. Sherry, what's going on? I see you. I see you. Epic L's in the house. You guys are awesome, guys. Awesome. How's everybody's day going? You guys, uh, this is what it's about, guys. This 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 entire scope is about adversities and excuses and things that may go wrong in your life. And it doesn't matter what the deal is. It doesn't matter what you're faced with. It doesn't matter how many problems you think you got. It doesn't matter. Oh, look, I got somebody. You just been limited, bro. But uh, yeah, man, guys, like this is what it's about. I'm gonna teach you guys and show you guys everything about me. So that way you guys can kind of relate to and see, you know, how this works and how, how you guys can apply this in your life. I've been through I've been through hell and back you guys. I mean, literally like you have no idea how many people I've run into that told me that I can't do what I'm doing, that I can't be successful, that that you know, this is all not possible, that this is all crazy. This is real. This is what it's about. And I'm going to give you guys from day 1 till now everything that I've been through and, and all the adversities I faced. It's 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 easy. Yes, guys, yes, that's how we grow. Yeah, if you guys could please share the feed. Let's get as many people in here as we can. I'd like to see at least two, 300 people in here. Um, all right, guys, I'm going to, once I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain to you guys everything that I've been through from day one till now. And I guarantee you, a lot of you guys will probably look back and think, wow, man, what was I thinking? You know, because it's all about a mindset. It's all about, it's all about, you know how you perceive things and your perception of things and 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 it affects your daily habits it affects how you go through your life so i'm going to share this with you guys i'm ready to go i'm going to give it to you guys plain and simple this is what it's about all right guys my name it is all about name set all right i'm going to i'm going to start ignoring i'm not ignoring you guys but i'm going to uh not pay too much attention to uh, the feed that way I can get this out to you guys everyone. Hey, uh, everyone that's in here Please remind the new people that are coming in to share the feed. Let's get as many people in here as we can All right guys, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get started with the story really quick uh, My name is John Cerrone. I go by JC limitless here on periscope uh, I've been trending here on periscope because of my story because of what I'm about to exp ex explain to you guys and share with you guys so this is it. My name is John Cerrone. I'm uh, from Chicago, Illinois area uh, in the suburbs. I'm 36 years old. I'm CEO of Standard Building Company. I'm also into merchant services and real estate. Um, I've overcome some major adversities in my life to get where I'm at in my life. And I want to share this story with you so you don't have to go through the same things I went through. Maybe I can help you guys not to crash and burn the way I had to. I was born Giovanni Pietro Cerrone. Giovanni Pietro Cerrone. That's what's on my birth certificate. Um, growing up, I grew up in a very dysfunctional home. I grew up in a mentally and physically abusive home with my father. Uh, my mother was nothing like that. She, she's an angel. She's a saint. She is the only reason I got through anything I got through in my life. Um, as I was growing up, I, I had to deal with things such as, uh, you know, not knowing my multiplication tables, not being able to do my times tables, my, you know, to learn how to multiply. My dad would put cigarettes out on my hand because I couldn't figure out how to do my multiplication. 
Uh, I remember a time my dad came home and when he came home, we had a bunch of kittens at the time, a box full of kittens, and he came home so upset, he kicked the box of kittens across the room. I seen kittens go fly everywhere. I'm like, oh my God, so I ran and picked them up and I put them in the box. Mind you, my dad did not work a job. My mother worked three jobs. He went in the kitchen and he seen that the dishes were not done. He reached up on top of that fridge, grabbed a pistol and pistol with my mom's hands because she did not do the dishes. My, she worked three jobs, you guys, to support us. It was me and my three sisters that, that she helped support. Growing up, uh, you know, we, I, it got to a point where uh, my father asked me, he said, who, who do you want to live with, your mom or me? And I told my dad I want to live with my mom. You know, I was definitely afraid of my dad. He, he, he beat the hell out of my mom, my sisters, all of us. Uh, it's just the way that he was. And, you know, he's just a bad person in that sense. So when he asked me and I told him I want to live with my mom, he looked me in my eye and said, I don't deserve to have the Italian name. So he went to Social Security and he changed my name from Giovanni Pietro Cerrone to John Peter Cerrone. So now my birth certificate says Giovanni Pietro Cerrone, but my birth, but my, my Social Security card, my ID card says John Peter Cerrone. He took that away from me and said I didn't deserve it because I didn't want to live with him. So at this point, man, I was kind of searching and going through life trying to find where I wanted to be in my life. I wanted to try and figure out what a man was supposed to be because I knew my dad was a bad example of what a, a dad should be. You know, it, it wasn't correct. And I took things too far, you know, as far as being a protector, as far as, you know, trying to be a man and be tough and, and all this stuff. And I ended up, you know, going through school, you know, I ended up going through school, like getting harassed, getting, getting my ass kicked every day, like, you know, I went from, you know, grade school to all the way to high school. And when we got to high school, things changed. Things started being different because, you know, people started joining in gangs. People started, you know, doing drugs. People started going off, doing the right thing, getting good grades. You know, like everybody got split up. You know, all of us that we knew as kids together, we all got split up. And being that that happened, you know, I started becoming a product of my environment because, you know, I was walking home from school one day, and I'll give you this little story. I was walking home from school one day, and these two kids were running down the railroad tracks behind me, and one of them had a gun. I lived in a bad neighborhood. I grew up poor, guys. Like, I lived in a one-bedroom apartment with me, my mom, and my three sisters. Uh, I literally slept on the floor by the front door because I thought I had to protect my family. I was young. I wasn't going to be able to do nothing, but that was my idea. And that day, I was running home you know, from school getting chased down the tracks and they pulled that gun on me. One of my other friends that I knew from school come running outside and called his uncle outside and said, uncle, uncle, run outside. And he came outside and he pulled a shotgun on them kids. They dropped that gun. And from that day forward, I found my friend. I found somebody who stuck up for me. I was no longer being bullied and pushed around and all this stuff. And I went back to school and I started getting fights all the time because I knew I had to stand up for myself. And I'll never forget it, man. The first kid I hit, I was like, oh, my God, you know, like, look what I can do. Like, I can protect myself. So I'm like, cool, man. All these punks has been running around here doing all this to me. Mind you guys, I didn't have this mindset I have now back then. So I, I was making bad choices. I was lost. I was trying to find my way. So I went around finding all the kids that did all this bad stuff to me, and I wanted to do it back to them. I, I was hurt, and I wanted to give it back. So I went back, and I found them all. I ended up getting expelled and kicked out of school. I was, I was no longer accepted at school because I turned into one of them. You know, it was a, a horrible thing that I should have never done. And so I started hanging around that kid that, that saved me that day when his uncle came outside, you know, and saved me. And obviously those weren't good people that I should have been hanging around, you know, if, they, if they're carrying guns as well. But I started running around with them. I got in a lot of trouble, you guys, uh, fighting every day, doing all kinds of stuff to prove to myself to these guys that I can hang around them and I was cool I was looking for I was looking for you know someone to accept me I was doing anything I could to be accepted at this point because I've never been accepted and I started to get a taste of it and I was willing to do anything to be accepted to be a part of any group I could and so I started running around this group and uh, I ended up going to jail because I was hanging around with this group uh, this group got me in trouble because I wanted to prove to them that I could hang out with them, and they were a bad group of people. They were gang members. I, I never joined a gang. I was never in a gang, but I wanted to be around a group of people that I felt could, you know, protect me or be a part of what I'm doing or whatever. 
You know, it was just stupidity as a kid. And so I went and stole a radio out of a car and I brought it back to him. Like, look, I'm like you guys. You know, I want to be with you guys. And the, and the group that I hung around with were all black kids. I was the only white kid there. And it gave me even more crap for that. So I had to, I had to go above and beyond that to to be accepted with them. And I did it. I, I, by any means necessary, I was hanging out with this group of people and they were going to accept me. They called me the crazy white boy. So I'm going through my life and, uh, you know, I ended up going to prison for stealing that radio. I got caught for it. I did prison time. I actually, I got sent to DOC boot camp. So after boot camp, I came home and I worked at a, uh, an oil change place, changing oil for six seventy five an hour. I made $6.75 an hour. I didn't care. I was happy with it. And I finally got accepted into the labor's union where I made twenty eight seventy five an hour. I lost my mind. Like I went and got my own house. I went and bought a new car, new truck. I mean, uh, you know, I started living this, you know, awesome life. I'm bringing home $1,200, $1,500 a week, legit. And the economy crashed in like 07, everything went downhill. It started going downhill hardcore. So in 07, you know, I started losing everything. I was with these people, you know, working for them forever. I thought that I'd never ever have to be working for anybody else uh, for my entire life. I started getting tattoos. I got two tattoos on my hands because I was going to sleeve up my arms because I found somewhere that I thought I was going to be for the rest of my life. I depended on somebody else for my income. And at the time, I didn't look at it that way. You know, it was just how things were, you know. So, and when I lost that job, you know, in 2001, uh, right when I came home from boot camp, uh, I also went to Illinois Center for Broadcasting. I got my degree in radio and TV. So once this all crashed, I went out there and started doing, uh, I started, uh, once this all crashed, I went out and started doing like DJ sets and stuff at bars, you know, so I can make money on the weekend. So I started DJing for two, three hundred bucks a night, but it wasn't paying my bills. You know, I lived this lifestyle where I needed all this money to pay for these bills. I ended up losing my brand new truck. It got repoed. I lost my house. I ended up losing everything. It got to a point where uh, everything was gone. Everything got taken from me because I couldn't afford what I've already got myself into. So at this point I, I moved on and uh, I had this friend that sold drugs. And anytime I needed money, I could ask him, hey man, can I, can I, uh, Sorry guys, I'm sorry. I'm not trying. I'm not trying to interrupt or nothing, man. I see a lot of questions coming up. I'm trying to remember them as I'm talking. So, um, you know, I had this friend. He sold drugs, and anytime I needed money, he loaned it to me. And I called him one night, and instead of him bringing me the hundred bucks I needed or the two hundred bucks I needed to borrow, instead he showed up with a scale and a bag of cocaine and said, "Look, dude, you owe me eighty dollars for this. You can make two hundred and fifty bucks." And I'm like, "Bro, I asked to borrow money." He goes, "I'm tired of being your money, man. You go get your own money." I was stuck. I was like, whatever, screw it. I knew these people partied in the bar. I didn't do it myself, but I knew they did. So I did it. And I made the 80 bucks and I made another, on top of that, another for another $80 bag. And I called them and said, I need another one. Guys, this blew up into something that I can't really talk about here because there's, there's a statue of law that would get me in trouble, I think. But dude, this got out of control so bad. So, so bad. It, I mean, I became literally like the go-to guy, the boss of the neighborhood of this area. And I ended up getting trouble over a $50 bag. And I ended up facing prison time once again. I faced prison. My first offer on the table was nine years in prison. They want to give me nine years for a $50 bag of cocaine. My charge was dealing and manufacturing cocaine. And I, I, didn't, I couldn't do it. So at that point... I was sitting in jail. My bond was two hundred thousand dollars. I needed twenty grand to walk. I was facing nine years in prison, and I'm sitting here listening to these guys in jail talk about all of this nonsense, man. Like the conversations caught my attention because I realized I didn't belong there. I'm not like this. This is what am I doing with my life? Something's got to change. So I went back to court again for my next court date. They offered me six years, and finally they offered me five years, and I took it. I ended up taking five years in prison. I took five years in prison. I lost five years of my life over this. And I came home and I got started again. And uh, not, not nothing bad, but I got started again, you know, working and trying to just be a legit person. And I realized that, you know, because I had that lifestyle making all that money before, doesn't mean I, I can have that now. I need to just, you know, uh, I just need to 
focus on, you know, living a normal life. So again, everything went turmoil. Everything went bad, horrible again. I was seven months behind in rent. My gas was shut off. My water was shut off. My power was shut off. I had a generator running my fridge to keep the little bit of food I had cold. At night, I would go next door and steal water out of my neighbor's spigot and put it in five gallon buckets to flush my toilet. And the, and, and this all just went bad. Like I, I, I was so stuck. And I said, you know what, man? I got $237 in my account right now. I'm gonna take $236, I'm gonna leave $1 in my account, $1 to keep that account open. I'm gonna take that $236 and I'm spending it all on business cards. I'm gonna go out here and do whatever I gotta do. I don't care if I'm cleaning gutters, I don't care if I'm cutting grass, I don't care what it is, I'm no longer dependent on somebody else to bring me money because every time I depend on a job, every time I depend on somebody else for my income, I lose it and something bad happens. And I won't let this happen again. So I risked everything. I had nothing to lose. I was seven months behind in rent. My gas was shut off. My water shut off. My power was shut off. Generators running my fridge. I had nothing to lose. What could I lose? $236? That was the least of my worries at the time. I spent it all on business cards. I had no experience in anything. I've never worked in any type of construction except for asphalt when I was in the labor's union. And so I put them out there. My card said, Cerrone Construction, Commercial Residential, and my phone number and I handed them out. I started getting calls for everything under the sun, anything you can think of with building homes. And this guy called me, <clears throat> this guy called me and said, hey, can you frame houses? I said, yeah, I can frame houses. I didn't bat an eye at him. I said, yeah, I can frame houses. He said, meet with me. I went there and I looked him dead in the eye and I said, I can frame houses. I can do anything you want me to do. You name what I need to do and I can get it done for you. He gave me two sets of blueprints. I took him. He gave me $25,000 for labor only, $25,000 to frame these houses. I had both these houses framed up in two weeks, and the end result was I had $9,000 in my pocket, all because I gambled on buying business cards and doing something on my own. Say something crazy. I left there and immediately went and got my general contractor's license. I immediately went and got general contractor's insurance. I immediately spent $3,000 on more business cards, t-shirts, a new truck, and ladders so I can keep going with this. So my cards kept going out. I started getting referrals left and right. Long story short, I turned that $236 into $400,000 in about three years time. Now, mind you, it wasn't all, you know, it wasn't all sugar coated. It wasn't all gravy trying to get to that money. It's not that easy to get there. There was plenty of ups and downs, plenty of lessons to be learned. I don't look at anything like a failure anymore. Every, everything that everyone looks at as a failure is a lesson. It's a lesson to be learned. You pick up off that lesson, you learn from it and move forward. And when I started moving forward, I ran into turmoil again. Matter of fact, I ran into Sean Thomas. I bet you Sean's in here now because my scope went up. I found Sean Thomas before I found Periscope. And at that time, even after I almost made $400,000 roll through my account, again, I was facing turmoil again because I was not getting my final payments. I had people slacking on getting jobs done. I had so many jobs going that I couldn't keep track. I, it, was, it, was, it was spiraling out of control. And he told me to get project managers, get people to help you, get some more managers in there to help you. And I did, and it saved me. But it was too late. Again, I lost my place. Now I got my own place again. I'm doing good again. Guys, it's, this is what it's about. Sean is a great guy. He helped me through everything before I even found Periscope. So, guys, there's nothing in this world. I don't care how much mental abuse you went through in, as a kid. I don't care how much physical abuse you went through as a kid. I don't care how many jobs you lost. I don't care how many times you lost your house. I don't care how many relationships went to shit. I don't care about none of that, you guys. It does not matter. What matters is, is your mindset today. All this can happen to me tomorrow. Everything, I'll lose it all. And the next day, I'll be right back where I need to be because I have the mindset to move forward. I've learned through my adversities. I learned through my, my lessons, my failures, how to, how to achieve success and move forward. I got a lot to learn. I'll be open-minded until the day I die. If I live to be 100 years old, I will be open-minded at 100 years old because there's always something to learn. There's always newcomers, there's always new platforms, there's always 
new creative things being brought to this world that we can learn from. People, places, things, ideas. Does not matter what it is. We can keep moving and learn more. And what I've learned is there's a process. This process is simple. This process is, think of, think of life like this, you guys. If money did not exist, if there was no money in the world, and you didn't have to live off money, what would you be doing today? What would you love to do today? What would you be out here doing? Seriously, what would you be out here doing if money did not exist? That's your passion. Once you have your passion, you need to obsess over that passion. Have a complete and utter obsession with that passion. The money's going to come with it, guys. Whatever that passion is, I don't care what it is. And with the things that I'm going to tell you right now, this, this, this will work with you guys through anything. It doesn't have to be business. It could be relationships. It could be friendships. It could be family. It could be friends. It could be getting through your normal day. It could be anything. Step one, obsession. Have an obsession. Not, not, a, not just a burning desire or a passion, but obsession for something. Where you, 24 hours a day, this is what you think about and how you love it and how you want to do this. Two would be to have a definite plan. No matter what, make sure you have a definite plan. Write it out every day. Make a daily mission statement with affirmations at the bottom. That daily mission statement should have exact, exact numbers of what money you need to make for the day. What goals need to be done today. And at the end of the day, you can hold yourself accountable for those things. You're going to have to learn how to ignore the naysayers and have resilience. You're going you're gonna to run across so many people that are going to tell you you're crazy. You can't do this. This is crazy. Why are you doing this? Go get a warehouse job. Go work at McDonald's. Have some, have some, have, have a comfortable income coming in. Ignore that. You and you alone pay your bills. You and you alone know what you're capable of. You and you alone are responsible for your happiness. Don't worry about making everybody else happy. Once you guys, once you guys realize that life changes, things change. Things get different. So once you guys got that, you got your obsession, you got your detailed plan, you're ignoring these naysayers. Now you got to have persistence. Go out there and be persistent, you guys. I'm giving you, I'm giving you a quick rundown of things off the top of my head. Have persistence. You're not going to get anywhere if you're not persistent. If you are not persistent in anything in life, you're not going to have it. You'll never obtain it. It's not going to happen. And you also got to get out there and break the rules. I'm not saying go out and break laws. I'm not saying go out there and do illegal stuff. I'm saying bend the rules, break the rules. Make your reality the way you need it to be, no matter what you got to do to get there. Think. People always say, think outside the box. I tell people, what the hell box are you guys talking about? There's no box to think outside of. That's a, that's a limitation in your mind. There's no imaginary lines. There's no rules. There's no boxes. Your life, your reality is what you make it. Whatever you want it to be, what you make it. And you go out there and do it. And once you run through those five things, you're going to start seeing success. You'll see it at a small level at first. And then it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And once you get to a point where you're, where you're stable, the last thing you should do is give back to people, you guys. And this is my way of giving back, is sharing my story, telling you guys what I've been through, showing you guys that we can't be stopped. There's nothing we can, there's nothing in this world that can stop us from anything. Nothing in this world, you guys. I can promise you that. Every, every limitation, every fear, every barrier, every detour you run into, you put it in your own mind. You made that possible by thinking that limitation, by having that fear. Fear creates barriers. Barriers create detours. What happens at a detour, guys? Sends you down another path away from your goal. It's not what this is about. We need to address our core beliefs like trust, worthiness, abundance, deservingness. These core beliefs are what we base our everyday decisions off of unconsciously. They're in our subconscious. If you have a bad belief about trust, how can you go out having trust issues, creating relationships and business? How can you go out and accomplish anything in your day if you don't trust people? I'm not saying trust everybody. I'm saying use your better judgment. But these core beliefs, once you address them and you have good beliefs about these core beliefs, 
you'll be able to make better decisions through your day and it changes your mindset. Your fears, your limitations, your barriers, your, your detours, they disappear. Once they start disappearing, you have more doors to open. More opportunity comes your way because you were able to take that no, another step forward towards what you're trying to do in your life. Guys, if you're not following me, follow me. This is my life story. I'm trying to keep it on track. But what I'm here to do is motivate and inspire people. I like to nexus with people that's networking on another level. We have a great community and an app called Quad of all positive, like-minded entrepreneurs. Over 3,000 engaging people there every day. Guys, if you don't know about Quad, download an app called Quad, Q-U-A-D, Quad. Once you get in the quad, search for Limitless Mafia. My followers decided to call themselves the Limitless Mafia, like the Gentleman's Mafia and such, you know, because they wanted a name for themselves and they wanted something powerful. And we're gonna make the Mafia name something positive. Search for Limitless Mafia when you get to quad. When you get in there, I guarantee you, your mind will be blown by the, the connection, the like-mindedness, the positivity, the people that are growing every day. I'm literally, I've been in there, we started this about two, two and a half weeks ago. I think we're well over 3,000, but I'm using it as a safe number. Go in there. You have nothing to lose. Download an app called Quad, Q-U-A-D, Quad. Download it. Search for Limitless Mafia in the search box. I will accept you into the Quad, and you can come in there and see all these like-minded people like myself, like Sean Thomas, like Mill Mentor, like, like Millionaire Motivator, all these guys, everybody. They're in there and, and they're sharing stuff with us as well. From startups to multimillionaires, what you will run into in there. Come in there and let me show you what this is about. Give us a chance. If you, if, if you guys don't like it, delete the app. You ain't gotta stay there. Download an app called Quad and join Limitless Mafia. We're in there. Guys, do you guys have do you guys have any questions about uh, this scope really quick. I'm gonna sit down man. I was getting a little hyped up. I started walking around. I got my coffee over here Coffee's for closers. Just ask Sean Thomas. He'll tell you all about it All right guys, give me some Q&A Have a smoke guys give me some Q&A who's got it? What's your relationship with your family like? My relationship with my mother and my sisters is amazing. Uh, my, hey, what's up, Caleb? My relationship with my mother, is, my mother and my sisters is amazing. I don't talk to my father. Uh, there's some more. There's some more points in my story about my father that I uh, I didn't talk about. Um, I just kind of wanted to give you an idea of who he was. I can't I, honestly. I can't believe I left it out of the story, but I think I, I didn't want to overwhelm people, but. I have an amazing relationship with my sisters, my mother, and my, and my son. Guys, uh, I'll tell you this right now. I have a two-year-old son. My name on my birth certificate was Giovanni Pietro Cerrone. That was my name. My dad took it from me. When my son was born, I gave my son my name. My son is Giovanni Pietro Cerrone. And he's going to be a thousand times the man I am today when I'm done with him. You guys watch and be ready for that. I love my mother. She is proud, definitely. Who's got, who's got some more questions? Did you make some gains today? Yeah, I made some gains today, brother. No, I don't deal with stocks. Uh, I leave that to the pros. Best way to get ahead after hitting bottom. The best way to get ahead after... I'll tell you how he took my name in a second. The best way to get ahead after hitting bottom is to clear your mind and, and correct your mindset. You have to learn how to be self-motivated, self-inspired. You have to learn how to deal with all these core beliefs like trust, deservingness, worthiness, abundance, all these great things, happiness. You have to have success. You have to have good beliefs about all these core beliefs. And once you do, you'll be able to move forward. And once you move forward just a little bit and you see the progress, it just you just keep going. Today, what I'm doing if, guys, if you want to change your mindset, I'm telling you, follow me now and get into the app called Quad. I can talk to you guys 24 hours a day, seven days a week in Quad. It's a live chat app. I'm there all day. I stop in and talk to everybody. Ask anybody who's in here and ask them what, what I'm talking about. Yeah, we're always dropping knowledge. You know that, Kaylee. How do I start a brewery? 
Well, it depends on your area. It depends on what type of brewery. Um, I would start. I would start researching breweries and and get an idea of how they started their companies. Um, the brewery is not, you know, nothing of my expertise, but I can tell you, you definitely want to go and talk to a lawyer. You want to start setting up an S corporation or an LLC. You want to go in and talk to the legal end of it first and get that get that set in stone. And then you can take it from there. And the lawyer will give you advice as far as your next steps you should take um, in the process. All right, thanks, man. I appreciate it. No, I never gave up. Does it look like I gave up? I never gave up, man. JC, could you let people know I'm running the feedback show on this when you are done? Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, para, are you going to host it from Parapreneurs? Yes, you're welcome. Very much so. Would you change something in your life, past or present? I would never change. I would not change one thing in my life. Okay, cool. I got you, brother. I will, I'm will. i going to invite everybody over there when I'm done with this, all right? Um, no, I would not change not one thing in my life. All, all that negativity, all the, be, all the beatings I took, all the mental beatings, all the physical beatings, all the time that was taken from me in my life in prison, I would not take not one bit of it back because it, it would change who I am today. I wouldn't be here right now. I wouldn't be talking to you guys. I went through hell and I made mistakes. Oh, uh, my dad took my name. I was born Giovanni Pietro Cerrone. I went through my first eight years of my life with my mom and dad, and my dad was very abusive. My dad put cigarettes out on my hand for not doing my multiplication. My dad pistol whipped my mom's hands for not doing the dishes. My dad left us, my, myself and my three sisters and my mom, in Florida with nothing, standing in a parking lot, and left us for good. My dad was a horrible person. And when he asked when, when I wanted to stay, he said, do you want to live with your mom or do you want to live with me? And I told him I want to live with my mom. My dad is the Italian side of the family. So my dad was so mad that I wanted to live with my mom. He went down to Social Security and came back and said, I didn't deserve to have the Italian name. And he changed my name to English, John Peter Cerrone. So he took Giovanni Pietro Cerrone from me legally and changed it to John Peter Cerrone because I didn't want to live with him. He said I didn't deserve to have the Italian name. Oh, thank you, Alexis. I appreciate that. Hey, I appreciate that, Sean. Definitely. I don't know where my dad's at. I have no idea. I think he's still alive. Yeah, he was a miserable, miserable individual. How did I find peace with it? <laughs> long, long days and nights. Long days and nights. My tattoos, one says love. And the other one says hate. Those were, those were two mistakes at 18 years old that I never, I never should have got. You share a similar story. Wow. I don't know where he's at. I honestly, I don't know where he's at. Yeah, Quad is the app where we chat, you guys. You guys, if you guys want to come chat with us, download an app called Quad, Q-U-A-D, and then search for uh, Limitless Mafia. Search for Limitless Mafia. Rocky Lady, what's up? Good to see you here. Good to see you. Hey, uh, Ricky, right now, I got to tell you something. Sean Thomas, uh, I talked to him earlier today. He would like to host one of your parapreneur shows. What you think about that? So uh, I'll get you in contact with him so you can talk to him. Yeah, he was in here. Uh, he wants to be on one of your parapreneur episodes, brother. So you got somebody that wants to show up too. Yeah, email him. Make sure you do. Big hugs. Thank you. I appreciate it. What would you want to try to relationship with your dad if he was trying to come back in your life? If my dad tried to come back in my life right now, um, I would say I think he's about 65 years old now. Um, it's whatever. He's still my dad. He People make mistakes. I don't know what his mindset was. I don't know how he thought. I'm sure it wasn't like me, but I, I would have to forgive him. I mean... 
It is what it is. It's in the past. He made me the beast I am today, so I really don't care. He created a monster, and he didn't even know it. I'm 36 years old. So I, I think he was about 30 when he had me. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that, man. Dimitri, thank you, brother. Guys, if you want to find my Instagram, uh, go to my Instagram. I've got two. My uh, The mother page is Limitless underscore Mafia. Hey, guys, my regulars, can you throw up at Limitless underscore Mafia? Also, you can find me at JC underscore Limitless. Um, guys, I got a bunch of stuff. If you guys can start throwing that up for me. Um, I got jclimitless.com. I have johncerrone.com. Start screenshotting, guys. Take screenshots. Um, at Limitless underscore Mafia. Come check out that page. It's a motivational and inspira inspirational page. We have videos. We have images. I have great content. I will get you fired up. Follow me here on Periscope. I will get you fired up. I will get your day going. I will get you through your day. I love you guys to death, man. Like I appreciate all you guys do. Uh, we have jclimitless.com, johncerrone.com. Uh, I have a YouTube. Every social media you can think of, I'm on it. I have like 11 social medias going. JC underscore Limitless is where you'll find me. Guys, I'm going to shut this down. I love you guys to death, man. Take a screenshot right now, guys. Take a screenshot. Boom, we got the quad and, the, and my stuff. Screenshot. Get in the quad, guys. I can't stress it enough. If you don't like it, just leave. But I guarantee you, you're not going to leave. Ask anybody who's in there. I love you guys. I'm going to be on today probably like three more times today. I'm coming at you today because I'm going to get you fired up for Monday. I'm going to tell you all about Mondays and how to attack your Monday. I guarantee you I can, I, can get you to, I can get you to accomplish three more goals tomorrow than you already have set on your table right now. And you won't even break a sweat doing it. Come back to me later today, guys. I love you guys more than anything you know in this world. We are the Limitless Mafia. We can't be stopped. We won't be stopped. I'm out this piece.